GN, and the cluster cool core. We were talking a little bit about this earlier today. Uh, and finally, what I'm going to concentrate on today um, is, is the ICL part of the BCG or the cluster? How are they different? How can we, how can we tell? Um, so this paper just got accepted and was on the archive a couple of days ago. Amazing timing. <laughs> so this is a sample of some of our galaxies, uh, our BCGs. Um, they're all listed up here. Uh, the name of the paper is Clocking the Formation of Today's Largest Galaxy, so trying to get an idea on what happened when, what happened first. <coughs> and um, the parent sample is from the NOAO Fundamental Plane Survey, which is essentially the 100 bright, X-ray brightest uh, local galaxy clusters. So that's what we're looking at. We're looking at really nearby brightest cluster galaxies in very X-ray bright clusters, so keep that in mind. <coughs> there are 25 northern targets with a uh, redshift within the range um, that the, the IFU coverage will hit some of the nearby neighbors and a little bit of the ICL or 25, and we got 23 of them. Uh, oh yeah, I'm going to take this moment to say that um, I am not a, a good driver. I do not enjoy driving. I got my first car when I was 30, actually over 30. And I was one of those people in LA who took the bus everywhere. And I never felt more like, I felt like I was a real advisor, like a real responsible adult, driving up, kit, white knuckling it, <laughs> up Kitt Peak, 6,000 feet with that huge drop off and my undergrad students in the back of the car. <laughs> That's when I knew I was finally an, an advisor. I will, so that story is to remind me to say that um, this work has been all done by undergrads, okay? So these are undergrads from Yale uh, who helped take the original data and start out, sort out the original um, data reduction pipeline, um, and my undergraduates from um, Cal Poly who've been helping with the, more with the analysis and writing of the paper. Um, so the WIN uh, sparse pack is a integral field unit, quasi-integral field unit, that's 70 by 70 arc second field of view, and each fiber is about five arc seconds across, okay? Um, hypothetically, we can make all these maps, then, of the age for each of our BCGs, of the metallicity, of the velocity, of the velocity dispersion, I don't want you to look at the details here because that's not what we actually do. Um, if you look at the signal to noise ratio, which is this plot here, there's a lot of yellow. So each individual fiber, when you get out to the outskirts of the galaxy and into the ICO, is really low signal to noise, too low to do anything with. So we stack our fibers. So we remove anything in the outskirts, any stars or galaxies or anything like that. The galaxies we'll hold on to and we'll um, analyze them later. The stars we throw away. <clears throat> um, and we're going to do our analysis in terms of these higher signal to noise regions. Okay, that's what we fit the um, uh, stellar models to. So we have a core region, an, an interior region minus the galaxy an outskirt region minus a bunch of galaxies and stars, and an ICL region again minus a bunch of galaxies and stars. Um, and so with the stack spectra, we can do all our, all our, spec, all our stack spectra have a signal to noise greater than 10. And we run those through the starlight population synthesis, um, codes using the miles or miles, uh, um, stellar models. The best fit spectrum then gives us an output of fraction of stars with a given age and metallicity, and as well as some kinematics. <clears throat> so the core populations of BCGs are really, really old. So this is our data. These are our results. <clears throat> here's the age. Here's the oops log R over um, R E. Sorry about that. There. Um, one R E is where I'm cutting off the figure right now. So the stars. In brightest, the cores of brightest cluster galaxies are very old for the most part. Um, that's good, that uh, agrees with a lot of the other work that's been done on the ages of the interiors of brightest cluster galaxies, which are always very old. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, I'll note that what I'm showing here is um, from Paola Oliva Altamirano's work and goes up to 1RE. <clears throat> get about the same value, a little bit higher. Her sources are a little bit further away. Um, the metallicities in the center of the galaxy are also high, start up very high. Um, and overall, we start to see uh, a drop. There's a negative gradient that is seen throughout. <clears throat> Um, again, previous uh, studies of the cores of BCGs also find very high uh, metallicities, and this fits really well with the Hirschman uh, models, which are um, sort of some of the newer um, Delisio Blazo models. And people have already seen a negative gradient set up in the core of the BCG as well. So what's new with this study is that we have several spectra that get into the BCG outskirts and into the ICL. There have been a few before, but this is a lot compared to what's out there. This is a large sample of spectrally de derived properties. <clears throat> um, so let's look at this one example. I think this is Abel 193. So nice color picture to get us oriented. There's the BCG. I'll just put it in the other way so we can see it better. Here's the BCG. You can see that, you know, here's the BCG outskirts. Maybe we're getting into the ICL a little bit. Um, this is our field of view. Okay, so if you squint, you can see little dots that just represents the fibers from sparse pack. The important thing is this is our field of view. We're covering the central galaxy. We're covering some of the nearby neighbors that may or may not be physical neighbors. And we think we're getting out into a little bit into the ICL. That paper that just came out I mentioned before, the Cluj paper, has Abel 193 in their sample. So I'm just going to show you, if you look, not with the SCSS, but way down deep with the, uh, with a small telescope and a beautiful camera. Here's the ICL that has just come out last month. So, what, I mean, we knew we weren't getting all the ICL. This really puts it in perspective. <laughs> so please keep in mind that we are looking at the BCG plus ICL, but we are starting to notice breaks in properties in our last bin, which is at about 40 kiloparsecs physical scale, and where um, some papers have predicted the ICL starts to dominate the signal. So we do think we are seeing a lot of ICL, but please keep in mind we're not yes, out here. Yes? Oh yeah, no, this is the question we're asking. Is like, is the BCG, is the ICL, is the initial cluster like part of the BCG or is it part of the cluster? That's the question we're asking. And we're trying the method that we're going about is to say, okay, let's map the BCG and the ICL, right? And let's see if there is a break, if we notice a break in properties along somewhere along the line maybe at like two or three or four times the effective radius of BCG. If we notice a sharp break, that would be in line with the idea that the ICL is different component than the BCG. If we don't notice a sharp break, that might more suggest that we're looking at the outskirts of the BCG, or we're still looking at the BCG, or that the ICL is a part of the BCG. Did that kind of, is that kind of what you were asking? Yeah, okay, so that's our method. We observe the cluster, we, you know, we draw a line, <laughs> and we ask if properties like age, metallicity, or velocity, velocity dispersion change right here. Okay, so now I'm showing you all the data. Uh, that white splodge has been removed, and I'll put a red line at the marker between BCG and ICL, which I just put at 1RE. Um, but you'll notice that this is where the ages drop, right? Um, we've had metallicity gradients set up before the 1RE um, uh, distance, and they continue to drop for the most part. I will say here, we tested a lot of different um, uh, stellar models. We tested a few different stellar not a lot, but a few different stellar models. And we also tested using 
um, Starlight versus PPXF. And there are differences on the individual cluster level depending on what you use, absolutely. But the overall trends of the ages dropping after 1RE and the metal density gradients being set in place are consistent no matter which way we do it. Um, so I'll just note that this matches what um, Montes did photometrically on the frontier fields, finding that at a radial distance of a few times RE, the ages drop and the metallicity drops as well. So we take uh, our profiles and we crudely model them with straight lines. All right. So we have um, uh, a slope. And now we're going to look at that slope and see if you know, our properties are increasing as you go far away from the core, or decreasing. And we're going to look at a bunch of different properties. Properties of the brightest cluster galaxy, maybe the age of its core, the magnitude of the BCG, um, or the velocity dispersion of the BCG itself. And we're going to take that slope and we're going to look at properties of the cluster not the BCG, right? The cluster's velocity dispersion or size or distance from the BCG to the peak, the center of the cluster. And we find no obvious correlation with age to BCG properties. Um, there's a negative, you know, negative values here of the slope are really caused by that sharp transition we saw in the, in the previous slide. We maybe see a little bit of a correlation with the cluster velocity dispersion.